And a lot of people come to me and say, Dan, I want to buy distressed deals. I don't know why. Maybe people are inherently fools, but people like looking for distressed properties. Everybody wants to be buying power of sales because they think they're going to get a good deal. Pro tip, you're not going to get a good deal on a power of sale. The lender Has there ever been a time when housing affordability hasn't been on the minds of Canadians? Probably, but I personally can't really remember because since I've been an adult, interest rates have been basically in decline and we've been able to borrow at net negative rates. So for much of the millennial generation, housing affordability has always been a major topic. We're competing with not really exceptionally good wages and a, a massive pool of buyers trying to consume Canadian housing. Housing affordability, I mentioned it in the last video, but it's really a component of three things. Prices, interest rates, and incomes. In order for housing affordability to change, one of those three levers needs to change. And we know, at least for the short term, that two of those levers are relatively fixed. So in order for houses to become more affordable, income needs to go up. So the average household income needs to go up for Canadians. Or interest rates need to come down because borrowing costs are a factor of affordability, which is measured in the monthly payment as a percentage of household income. Or finally, prices need to come down. We know that the Bank of Canada has focused a lot of their mandate on job vacancies and unemployment in the Canadian economy as an effort to control the risk of a wage price spiral and reduce inflation in the Canadian economy. We have an economy that's still running with really tight unemployment, and that would tell us that the economy is still running pretty hot. That means that inflation is not going to get under control anytime soon. We also know that the Bank of Canada is intending to likely increase interest rates by another 25 basis points on January 25th, and more likely that they're going to be holding interest rates until the end of 2023 and maybe thinking about cutting once inflation is under control and getting into 2024. And so we know that interest rates and incomes are relatively fixed variables. The only variable left to create a more affordable housing situation is for house prices to come down. The Canadian Real Estate Association just released their quarterly forecast in which they predict that in 2023, we will see house prices decline 5.9% on an annual basis to $662,000 in 2023. They mentioned in this forecast that it's important to note that based on monthly data under the surface, that the decline has basically already happened over the course of 2022. However, it's important to note a couple of things. So national home sales rose 1.3%, which is, is nominal, um, but they rose 1.3% in December. This is really rare to see happen. I actually don't know of a, a month on record where there was more sales in December than November. And to me, it makes you wonder whether or not we're starting to see opportunism come back into the market as prices get lower and lower and buyers are starting to feel like you know, might be the time for them to kind of time the market or find the bottom. Not that I feel that the bottom is even remotely close. Um, however, that monthly activity was actually 39.1% below December of 2021. So on an annual basis, volumes have come way down. The home price index from the Canadian Real Estate Association declined again 1.6% month over month. Last month was one of the first time that we saw it actually move up from, uh, I think, 10 months of consistent declines. But if you look at the second chart on the Crea Stats website, aggregate composite MLS HPI chart, you can see that this is the biggest year-over-year -year decline in house prices that we've seen since 2009. Looking at chart A from the Canadian Real Estate Association website or the Crea Stats website, this chart shows us monthly home sales. And I think this is an important one to look at because it, it really indicates the how Canadians respond to economic uncertainty. So if you look back at 2009 when you know, we're going through the global financial crisis, you can see a steep drop in the number of sales. So the volume had the volume had declined. And Canadian Real Estate Association expects that 
volume for 2023 will be about 10% below what it was in 2022. But they expect it to increase the in 2024. And if you look at the past charts, that's congruent with what history would tell us about volume decline. So in 20, in 2009, the, there was a lot of economic uncertainty. Canadians paused their housing purchase and sale decisions. The market paused for almost a year and then it ramps up really quickly and trades over the 10-year average for about a year thereafter. So what this would tell us is we're likely in for a a bit of a slow and honestly probably a painful year in Canadian real estate. But a lot of positive factors likely coinciding in 2024 could create a pretty strong recovery for the Canadian Real Estate Association. So this could create a bit of optimism for a potential recovery of the real estate market starting in 2024. A lot of people talk about real estate as if it's binary, like it can only go down or up. And the reality is real estate markets can trade sideways for a long period of time. If you look at past housing cycles in Canada... 1989 to 1994 was a very slow grind down started with a big drop which we've already seen happen in Canadian real estate and then prices can kind of grind down over time and you can experience a long bottom period I think that that would actually be the best outcome for Canadians is if prices were moving sideways or you know with inflation for the foreseeable future and allows people to trade in and out of the market safely the highest magnitude decreases in price happen in the most credit sensitive market. So looking at the chart on the Korea Stats website that says residential average price, year over year percentage change. The Canadian average price decreased somewhere between 10 and 15% year over year. And but the only other places that have actually decreased more than that are British Columbia and Ontario. British British Columbia has decreased in price between 10 and 12%. Alberta's gone up about 3% in price on a year-over-year basis. Saskatchewan has gone down about 3% in price. Manitoba has gone up about 1% in price. Ontario has dropped about 12 to 13% in price. Quebec has gone down about 1% in price. New Brunswick and Nova Scotia have gone down about 2% in price. Prince Edward Island has gone up about 16 or 17 percent in price from December 2021 to December 2022 and Newfoundland has gone up 10 percent in price during that period of time what this tells us is that and this is a really good reflection of the impact that interest rates have on housing the markets that have higher prices are more credit sensitive this means that people need to borrow more money to buy houses in those markets and so the impact of interest rates increasing causes more pain in markets where people have bigger mortgages and more credit that they use to purchase houses. In markets where house prices are are lower or didn't accelerate as fast or the income to price ratio was much more realistic for people to, to buy homes on the average household income, those markets were much more insulated from the impact of interest rate increases. Similarly, and this is what why it's important to look at this data you could you can look at these markets for as a canary in the coal mine for what recovery might look like because as interest rates come down they're more likely to lead the charge in recovery so paying attention to markets like Ontario and BC to see what would be happening across the country at a later date using them as a leading indicator is a good way to employ a real estate investment strategy in in Canadian real estate. I think the note about credit sensitivity of different real estate markets is interesting when looking at RBC's most recent real GDP growth forecast for uh, Canada's provincial economies because Ontario is the only province that they expect to see negative GDP growth in 2023 per their most recent forecast. And what this tells me is as Canadians start spending more and more money on household debt service on their monthly payment, that money gets taken out of the economy and it contracts the GDP or gross domestic product of that province, let's say. And Ontario is exceptionally exposed to housing and has exceptionally high household indebtedness or debt. This is interesting because when you think about affordability, you think Canadians 
don't think about the full purchase price of the house. We don't buy houses, we buy payments. When you buy a truck, you buy a payment. When you buy a car, you buy a payment. Even when people are buying phones now, they're financing them. And houses are no different, being the largest asset purchase that we're making in our lives, we buy what we can afford on a monthly basis. So how does that decrease? Well, that needs to come down in value. And interestingly enough, you're likely going to start seeing the word deflation start appearing as we get to the period of inflation topping out. Canada's CPI is down 0.6% month over month with the three and six month annualized rate of 0.79% and 0.19% respectively, which is down 12.68% in the first half of the year. So the conversation is going to very quickly shift from inflation and battling inflation to deflation, which is likely that hard landing situation that you see happen as a result of monetary policy. And deflation in house prices and in other components of the economy is what eventually gets us to a point where the bank needs to stimulate the economy by dropping rates again. The biggest components of the decrease in inflation came from gas prices being reduced significantly and energy prices being reduced significantly. Shelter costs and food are up still significantly on a year-over-year basis, food being up 10% and shelter being up 7.02%. And we know that housing affordability is a component of that shelter inflation. So it's almost like this paradoxical situation where the policy objectives are at odds with what they're battling. So as interest rates go up, the portion of the monthly payment that goes to the interest that goes to the bank, it's a sunk cost, money you'll never see again, that gets bigger. That means that every time interest rates increase, it becomes a better deal to not own a home, to maybe rent or put your money into something else. And if that process continues over time, gradually you get more and more people choosing not to own a home and maybe choosing to rent. And this can actually have upward pressure on rent. So as an investor, you're in an interesting environment where prices could be coming down and rents could be coming up simultaneously. This really creates a perfect storm for somebody who is looking for a real estate investment over the next 36 months. So the interesting conversations I've been having around real estate right now are in two places. Number one is vendor take back mortgages and number two is power of sales. Both of these probably deserve their own video, but very quickly, I'm seeing an increase in the number of sellers willing to allow vendor take back mortgages on the purchase of their property or offering vendor take back mortgages. A vendor take back mortgage very quickly is when the seller lends you the money to buy the property. So the seller has equity in the property, maybe they owe nothing on it. And rather than you going and getting a mortgage from a bank, which is very difficult right now, sellers are realizing that credit is the problem. And so they're actually lending the money to purchasers. So if they'll say, you give me 20% down and you can pay me a monthly payment until the property's paid off. That's an oversimplification, but that's kind of how it works. Trend number two, a lot of people talking about power of sales. We have seen an increase in power of sales from almost a, almost a, a 60 or 70% increase in the number of power of sale listings in a, on a year-over-year basis. So they're going up a lot. This means that people are beginning to get delinquent in their mortgages. We're starting to see signs of distress happening in the real estate market. And a lot of people come to me and say, Dan, I want to buy distress deals. I don't know why. Maybe people are inherently schools, but... People like looking for distressed properties. Everybody wants to be buying power of sales because they think they're going to get a good deal. Pro tip, you're not going to get a good deal on a power of sale. The lender has a legal obligation to try and protect the equity and to sell it at market value. They have to try and protect the equity of the borrower who is in default. Thanks again for watching. I recently did a write-up on this Canadian Real Estate Association stats or CREA stats for Real Estate Magazine. I'm going to be doing that on a monthly basis. and I'm going to be trying to cover these stats on a monthly basis. CREA releases their stats on the 15th of every month, and I will try and cover them as promptly as possible. Uh, as a quick recap, national home sales rose into December, which is very rare and surprised me a little bit. So we saw more sales in December than November. Kind of alludes to a bit of opportunism that we, we might be seeing in the market. Um, But on a year-over-year basis, home sales were down about 40%, which is kind of scary for the real estate industry. 
House prices continued to decline and are now at the highest annual decline that we've seen since 2009 during the great financial crisis. And the national average sale price is now down about 12% on a year over year basis. So these are a lot of alarming statistics for the Canadian real estate market. And I expect that we're not going to see much good data for the Canadian real estate market for the entire year of 2023. So we will have our good news segment starting in 2024, which is when the Canadian Real Estate Association forecasts that volume will ramp up by about 10%. And I would agree, I think that, that you know, we're going to see a one year lull and we might start seeing a recovery in 2024. That's all for me. I'll see you next time. That's all for me. I will see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, if it created value for you, I'd really appreciate it. If you left me a comment, talk a little bit of shit, start an argument with me. I, I really enjoy healthy debate and civil discourse about real estate um and hit the subscribe button because having subscribers and more viewers and likes and shares and all that stuff helps me and it it gives me a big dopamine hit that makes me want to make more content like this so thanks